In this video, we'll do an example of a proof involving the coordinate mapping. In particular, we'll prove the following theorem. Let V be a vector space with basis script B equals little b1, little b2, all the way down to little bn. And let's denote the coordinate mapping relative to B as follows. A vector V gets mapped to another vector V sub B in Rn. This vector on the right contains the B coordinates of our vector V. A set of vectors V1, V2, all the way down to V sub M in V is linearly independent if and only if the coordinate vectors v1 sub b, v2 sub b, all the way down to vm sub b, form a linearly independent set in Rn. In other words, this theorem states that the original vectors are independent if and only if the coordinate vectors are independent. Here's our strategy. Part 1, write down everything that is given. In other words, V is a vector space. 2, B is a basis of V. And 3, this is our notation for the coordinate mapping of V into Rn relative to basis B. So to be explicit, if we write V in terms of the basis B, V is going to be a linear combination of B1 down to B sub n, where these c's are scalars. With this notation, the coordinate vector of v relative to b is simply the vector composed of the scalars c, arranged into a vector in Rn. We may use the fact that the coordinate mapping is an isomorphism. In other words, it's linear 1, 1, and on 2. We may not have to use all of these properties, but we're welcome to use whatever properties we need. Step 2. Let's write down what we must prove. Specifically, this set is linearly independent in V if and only if the corresponding coordinate vectors form a linearly independent set in Rn. Step 3. We need to develop a strategy that uses what is given and ends with what must be proven. Specifically, we're going to prove that the set V1 down to Vm has a dependence relation in V if and only if the corresponding coordinate vectors have a dependence relation in Rn. And from this we'll be able to conclude that either both sets have non-trivial dependence relations, that is they're linearly dependent, or they have no dependence relations, that is they're both linearly independent. Here's a good warm-up exercise to try on your own. Argue that if w is in v, then w is equal to 0 if and only if its coordinate vector is equal to 0. I'll point out that the 0 corresponding to w is in v, and the 0 corresponding to the coordinate vector is in rn. Put this on pause, and we'll check answers when we do the proof. So here's the proof. First we note that the coordinate mapping is a one-to-one -one linear transformation. Therefore the coordinate vector of V is equal to zero, in Rn that is, if and only if V itself is equal to zero. And this is because the only vector a one-to-one -one linear transformation maps to zero is zero itself. Thus, if v1 down to v sub m is a set of vectors in v and a1 down to a sub m is a set of scalars, then a1 times v1 plus a2 times v2 all the way down to a sub m times vm is equal to zero in v if and only if the coordinate vector corresponding to that sum is equal to zero in Rn. 
Let's label the first equation with a star because we're going to refer back to it later. Now we note that the coordinate mapping is a linear transformation, hence we can rewrite the coordinate vector corresponding to the sum as a1 times v1 sub b, a2 times v2 sub b, all the way down to a sub m times vm sub b. That's using the fact that linear transformations are additive and homogeneous, so we can distribute the coordinate mapping as well as pull the constants a1 down to am out in front. And therefore, star holds if and only if the sum a1 times v1 sub b plus a2 times v2 sub b all the way down to am times vm sub b is equal to zero in rn. It follows that the set v1 down to vm and the corresponding set of coordinate vectors have exactly the same dependence relations because these equations are dependence relations if any non-zero scalars solve them. In particular, v1 down to vm is linearly independent. There's no dependence relation. If and only if the set of coordinate vectors is linearly independent. This completes the proof. In other words, QED.